based on ANN, the Adventist Development and Relief Agency in Slovakia, helped with COVID-19 testing. Elementary school students in the United States conduct an online evangelism campaign. And later, Adventists help farmers in Southern Africa who have been hit hard by the COVID-19 pandemic receive aid. These stories are coming up. Thanks so much for joining us this week. First in the news, the Adventist Development and Relief Agency, or ADRA, in Slovakia is helping hospitals and communities ramp up COVID-19 testing capacity to deal with the surge in coronavirus cases that began in the fall. In September, ADRA built additional shelters and waiting areas at external COVID-19 testing centers at three hospitals in Bratislava, Slovakia's capital. ADRA coordinated the construction of these testing centers at the beginning of the pandemic. At the end of October, the government of Slovakia launched a massive campaign to test the majority of the country's population for COVID-19 in an attempt to slow the spread of the virus without imposing a national lockdown. ADRA volunteers spent an entire day setting up shelter tents at two temporary testing sites in Bratislava. ADRA also provided germicidal clamps, which used ultraviolet radiation to destroy viruses and bacteria to assist with disinfection at 17 testing sites. ADRA has played a pivotal role in establishing COVID-19 testing centers in Slovakia since the earliest days of the pandemic. In March, University Hospital of Bratislava invited ADRA to see oversee the construction of a testing facility outside its infectious disease clinic. Using skills gained from directing humanitarian projects abroad, ADRA staff coordinating the construction of the external testing center with assistance from hospital staff, as well as personnel from the Army, police, and fire department. ADRA brought in containers as offices for registering patients and collecting samples, set up tents as waiting rooms and shelters, and installed plexiglass barriers to separate medical workers from incoming patients. The first outdoor testing center was ready for service in just 48 hours. ADRA also worked during the pandemic to support homes for the elderly and people with special needs. ADRA reached out to 130 retirement homes and identified a serious mismatch between their financial capacities and the hygiene and protection requirements put in place during the pandemic. After partnering with individual and corporate donors, ADRA began distributing hygiene supplies, personal protection products, and germicidal lamps at retirement homes across Slovakia. When a pharmaceutical company donated 15,000 packages of vitamins to boost the immune systems of the elderly people, ADRA mobilized volunteers in all eight regions of Slovakia to help prepare and distribute the vitamins. ADRA is responding to the coronavirus crisis around the world, assisting approximately 2.7 million families in more than 70 countries. ADRA's emergency relief activities include distributing food, hygiene products, and cash vouchers to people in need, as well as training frontline workers and providing medical supplies to hospitals serving vulnerable communities. To learn more and get involved with ADRA's ongoing COVID-19 response, visit ADRA.org. Students from the Lake Region Conference in the United States recently participated in the Countdown to Eternity live stream series, which began on November 15th. The seminars revolved around the book of Revelation and end time events, and each night a different topic was presented. The series was streamed on both Lake Region's YouTube channel and Facebook page. Each night, Countdown to Eternity began with a welcome and opening prayer, followed by a health nugget and theme song. The message for the evening followed, flanked by a review quiz, closing remarks, and closing prayer, all done over the course of the series by 60 students from Shiloh, Peterson Warren, Capital City, and South Suburban Academies. Peterson Warren Academy principal Lynette Jefferson explained, it was also a revelation for them to learn some things that maybe they haven't particularly heard before. It was a twofold blessing. We shared the gospel with others and prayed that they understood some new things, but also it helped the students to grow spiritually. The schools began laying the groundwork for this initiative on September 13th, keeping students on course with their regular classes, which simultaneously hosting, while simultaneously hosting a virtual evangelistic seminar was no small undertaking. Under normal circumstances, a production of this magnitude would have taken a little less effort. 
However, due to the quarantine and the ongoing rise of COVID-19 cases, school principals had to dig deeply into their supply of creativity and resourcefulness to film and record the series. In reflecting on Countdown to Eternity, series creator and Detroit Burns Avenue member Tim Gardner said he was proud seeing the students execute the seminar. Personally, I'm amazed at what God can do with willing vessels, be it kids, elders, or lay people. If you are willing and obedient, it is an awesome privilege to be used by the Spirit of God. About 50 Seventh-day Adventist volunteers have helped create Te Harunu, a television special that tells the story of how the gospel of Jesus Christ was delivered to the Mori, the indigenous people of New Zealand. The program was developed in response to a live Christmas performance at Elam Seventh-day Adventist Church in Christchurch at the end of 2019, which told the story of the birth of Christianity in New Zealand. Filming commenced in early 2020. Te Haronu tells the story of a friendship between a Northland chief named Rutara and the Reverend Samuel Marsden from Port Jackson, Australia. Their chance meeting on board a sailing ship in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean led to a strong bond between the two men. Rutara was extremely ill and Marsden and his family were able to nurse him back to health. Rutara also attended Marsden's church services and quickly saw the benefit of a religion that taught forgiveness and peace rather than the custom of Utu that prevailed in his homeland. Utu demanded payback or the obtaining of satisfaction for a wrong, which often resulted in warfare. The friendship between Rutara and Marsden was crucial in opening the door for the gospel to be shared with the Maori people and resulted in Rutara inviting Marsden to bring missionaries to New Zealand. Marsden responded and arrived on the shores of New Zealand on December 23rd, 1814. He preached on Christmas day of that year, expounding on Luke 2, 10, which declares the birth of Christ to be the tidings of great joy or Te Harunu. The series covers the outcome of that day, which over the next couple of decades resulted in a paradigm shift for the Maori people. By the 1840s, virtually all Maori people were aligned with Christianity, and before long, many of them became missionaries in their own right. Te Harunu was filmed and edited by Revelation 18 Media and will be screened in the week leading up to Christmas. Advent Health and Texas Health Resources hosted a ribbon cutting ceremony on December 1, celebrating the opening of their new joint venture facility, Texas Health Hospital Mansfield. The campus offers comprehensive services, including emergency care, general surgery, women's care, orthopedics, and interventional cardiology. Also from Advent Health, a new partnership with the School District of Osceola County and another Central Florida health system will help address food insecurity in the region. These are the stories from Advent Health this week. Hi, my name is Kenneth Rose and I'm the President and CEO of Texas Health Hospital Mansfield. I am pumped for today. This is the culmination of a lot of work, planning, praying, and vision. We have been preparing for this day, the day we're cutting the ribbon and opening this facility up to our community for months, for years. So it's so exciting to be here today and be part of the ribbon cutting, be part of this grand opening. I know we will accomplish great things together here at Texas Health Mansfield. Food insecurity is one of the top community health needs in Central Florida. A new partnership between Advent Health, Orlando Health, and Osceola County Schools aims to drive that need down for students with a ride of sorts on something called the Smart Bus. Senior videographer Dave Harrison shows you. The Smart Bus is a renovated school bus that we have 11 corrals in with internet access, individual hotspots, and laptops to take out into the community to different areas for students to be able to do homework and research on. We're really excited about our new partnership with Advent Health and Orlando Health. We are adding to the Smart Bus a Healthy Kids initiative. According to the most recent Community Health Needs Assessment, about 63% of students in Osceola County either receive free foods or meals at a reduced rate. 
Also, about two out of five people in Osceola County responded back, either they didn't have access to healthy foods or affordable foods. We know that um, the children who are food insecure uh, can sometimes live in areas where they have a lack of access to high quality foods. As a result, they're eating a lot of kind of nutrient poor but energy dense um, foods and that can result in obesity. And children that are obese as kids um, can become adults that are also overweight and obese. And it's also associated with a lot of um, uh, chronic conditions as they get older. Going out into the community and giving them education and information on healthy initiatives for them to take and to help them with internet access, early literacy, it's all a, all a huge need within our county. This falls right in line with our um, brand promise of round wholeness of mind, body, and spirit, but also according to our mission statement of extending the healing ministry of Christ. In Orlando, Tom Johnson for Advent Health. Coming up, Hope Channel in Norway puts together a special event just in time for Christmas. But up next, farmers in South Africa have been doubly hit by the COVID-19 pandemic, and the Adventist Church is there to help bring relief. We may look, pray, read, think, worship, sing, and share differently, but we all look forward to the Sabbath, and we all look forward to the future when Jesus will come again. With this message in mind, we arrived at a core component for a new identity system, the creation grid. Regardless of what or where you are designing, you can always find information to help you communicate that we are all Seventh-day Adventists. Why is there evil in the world? Are Christians hypocrites? Is the Bible a fairy tale? Does Jesus love everyone? Church doesn't feel relevant to my life. Is God even real? You have questions? Let's talk about it. I Believe Bible. Welcome back. As the COVID-19 pandemic continues to cause havoc across the globe, some farmers in the northern parts of South Africa have received a double dose as they've been hit hard by the drought disaster that has not only cost their livestock, but their lives as well. Sid Media and Communications Director for the Southern Africa Indian Ocean Division, Noel Sibanda, brings us this report. Southern Africa has been hard hit by the persistent drought due to global warming during the last decade, and the animals and the livestock have not been spared either. Parts of South Africa in the Southern Africa Indian Ocean Division is experiencing the worst drought in a thousand years. Touched by the death of God's creatures, Mills on Wheels under the Southern Africa Union Conference, SAU, have been feeding the underprivileged and elderly people in South Africa for the past 55 years, and they have since turned their humanitarian work to farmers by feeding their livestock and their workforce as well. The statistics of the drought is very scary here in South Africa, with 31,000 people losing their jobs, with more than 7 billion rand lost to the industry. Um, at Meals on Wheels, we believe that if we support our farmers, the food will go back to the people that need it the most. Touched by the news headlines of some farmers committing suicide because they could not stomach or stand the sight of their dying livestock, Meals on Wheels, with a convoy of goodies, both for humans and livestock, made their way to the Northern Cape to be the hands and feet of Jesus as they champion the General Conference strategic plan of I Will Go. Up until today, I wasn't expecting anything and I wasn't sure on what kind of help we were going to receive. We also have, not only in this particular area, we've got farmers in other regions as well that has gone as far as committing suicide, that has gone through the process of minimizing and even giving away and selling half of their life, livestock. This indeed was a good surprise for us. We would like to thank the Good Samaritans for their kind gesture. 
For Meals on Wheels, this humanitarian project is only the beginning of the good things to come and a long relationship that is not just going to save the sheep and cattle, but also humans as well, both physically and spiritually. As one farmer said, we're not only bringing food, but we're bringing spiritual food. The farmers were shocked and humbled by the good gesture shown by Meals on Wheels. I just want to thank all the organizations that are involved, especially um, Give of the Givers, your organization, Meal on Wheels, as well as the Afri Forum, and for all the other external um, companies. To feed more than 180,000 hot meals per day to the less privileged members of our society is indeed a milestone. But to take this humanitarian project to the farmers and their livestock is just an amazing love. And Mills on Wheels is determined to save God's creatures with the meager resources they have. And this project will save some of God's creation. Today we're happy to be able to make that difference to the farmers. We realize that without them we don't have food and we want to encourage them to continue, uh, remind them that God is there for them, that we are there for them, and um, to wish them well. Um, we know we have been blessed with some rain, and we are expecting more, and we just pray that um, we will be able to go through this challenging time together. Um, as Mules on Wheels, we strive to transform lives through charity and motion, and um, we look forward to work with the farmers again to make that little difference that we care. This is our purpose, our reason for being. The reason why the Bible teaches us over and over again that we are of not any value until we are of service to the communities that we serve. So to be given the privilege to serve this larger community, the farming community that provides for the food that we eat every day, is an honor and a privilege for us at Meals on Wheels. Meals on Wheels is taking this noble project seriously and working hand in glove together with their donors, they want to bring more smiles to these farmers. As the rainy season continues in Southern Africa, the pastures have been revived once again as evidenced by some of the wildlife grazing behind me, a sign that summer is indeed here and Mills and Wills are taking no chances as they continue to soldier with their mission, that of bringing hope and love to these farmers and their livestock. For the Adventist News Network, this is Noah Skwanda reporting from South Africa. Christmas in Showdale is a brand new musical for children written and composed by Sheila Lex of Hope Channel, Norway. The project allows those who are interested to get the rights of the musical translated and make their own version of the series. Communication Director for the Adventist Church in Norway shares more. Christmas in Shadowdale is a brand new musical for children written and composed by Celia Lechnes of Hope Channel, Norway. It's a dramatic series intended to air the four weeks prior to Christmas. The three main characters of the story are facing personal challenges their pastor is trying to resolve with them. And you will be able to get full rights for making your own version of the series. For the Adventist Network we offer the following for free. All the footage, original music, playback soundtrack without voice, and an English manuscript. If you are interested, contact silja.leknes at hopechannel.no. Coming up, Ashley Chisholm is here with This Week in Adventist History. But up next, Adventist Mission shares the story of a woman dedicated to sharing Jesus with those around her. Hi, Bill. How are you? Are you okay? Dear Vielle, I can't even remember how long we've been staying at home now because of this virus. For now, it's just nice to hear your voice and see your face. Nothing beats playing outside in the dirt, though. Which reminds me, 
Are your hands clean? Yeah. Mommy and Daddy says not a lot of kids get COVID-19, but it's always nice to be extra safe. We should wash our hands before picking our nose. <laughs> Washing our hands protects us, but it also keeps us from spreading the virus. In case we touch something dirty, let's always be clean and safe, okay? Love, Joey. <laughs> Any idea what time it is? We really, really need our sleep. Are you from? No, we're not from the future, but we know you only pay attention to yourselves, so here we are. But how? We have no time for that. We have less than 30 seconds. Fact number one. Adults need seven hours of sound, restful sleep to keep their immune systems healthy and to fight viruses. And today, right now, is the single most important thing you can do to keep yourself healthy. What are you doing? We're just Googling if spicy foods cause hallucinations. A fact two. Staring at your phone or your computer right before bed prevents sound sleep. And you'll be tired the next day. Ain't nobody got time for that. Can we just go to bed, please? After her husband left her, Farron knew that she had to find a way to support herself. Now as a global mission pioneer, Sarah says she wants to serve God as long as she's alive. Adventist Mission has more. When Sarah's husband left her four years ago, she knew she had to find a way to support herself, but she didn't know where to look for a job. She prayed for direction, and God impressed her to share His Word with the people living around her. Sarah began visiting her neighbors and their homes. I prayed for the sick, and they got well. I prayed for those who had evil spirits, and the spirits went away. I prayed for those who couldn't have children, and they were able to start a family. Some people were happy when Sarah visited them, but others didn't like it. One day, Sarah visited a family who was worshiping an idol. They demanded that she worship with them, but she refused. One young woman angrily plunged Sarah's hand into a pot of boiling oil. I prayed, and when I removed my hand from the oil, it wasn't burned at all. The next day, the young woman's father called Sarah to apologize. He asked her to pray for his family. Sarah was happy to uplift this family in prayer. Now they are changed. They have accepted God and they worship with us. Five families witnessed Sarah escape serious injury that day. They were amazed and they too have asked her to pray for them. When the local Adventist pastor learned about Sarah's miraculous experience, he told her, you need to work for God. He offered her a position as a global mission pioneer, and Sarah eagerly accepted it. Four years later, she still visits families in her community. She prays with them and shares literature about Jesus. On Sabbaths, she invites a group of women to worship in her home. Every Wednesday, she hosts a Bible study. There are many widows and orphans in her city, and Sarah does all she can to meet their spiritual and physical needs. She often buys the women saris, or food for their families. As a pioneer, it's not only about prayer or just going to their houses. If I have extra clothes, I want to clothe them. If they need food, I will feed them. It's my duty. Sarah is no longer sad that her husband abandoned her. After he left, God has given me more strength so that I can preach the gospel and tell people that He is coming soon. He is taking care of me. Sarah asks you to pray for the people of her city. I want them to be ready for the second coming. I also want to appeal to everyone to be an example to others and serve them wholeheartedly. Sarah has found her greatest joy in being a global mission pioneer. I'm happy, and I'm willing to serve God as long as I'm alive. Please pray for Sarah and all our Global Mission pioneers around the world who are sharing the good news of Jesus' love and soon return.
Watch this and other mission stories online by visiting AdventistMission.org, then click on videos at the top. And finally, for today's episode, let's turn to Ashley Chisholm for a look at Adventist history. This week, we hear about Andrew Cudney, the first ordained minister sent to Pitcairn Island. Welcome to This Week in Adventist History. On December 14th, 1880, Andrew J. Cudney wrote of his four weeks worth of evangelistic meetings held in Silver Hill, Nebraska. A few years of pastoral work soon saw Cudney called in 1888 to serve as the first ordained minister sent to Pitcairn Island. Leaving his wife Anna and their sons Bert and Paul in Nebraska to prepare for their later arrival, the 36-year-old Cudney sailed first to Honolulu, Hawaii, and waited for a ship that could take him to Tahiti and on to Pitcairn. According to Cudney's letter from July 31st, 1888, published in the August 21st, 1888 issue of the Review, an Adventist in Honolulu had purchased a ship and hired a crew. I trust that our brethren here will take hold of the work with earnestness, Cudney wrote, adding, I ask your prayers that God may guide in his holy work. That was the last time anyone ever heard from Cudney or from anyone aboard the ship, which was presumed lost somewhere in the 2750 miles, nearly 4,500 kilometers between Honolulu and Tahiti. Lines written by Uriah Smith's son, Leon, capture some of what it meant for the ship to have disappeared. And still with expectant eye, the islander climbed the height, but ever the days and weeks went by without the looked for sight. And still sad hearts at home sought news from the voyage heard, but ever the many days did come without the welcome word. Cudney's loss rippled throughout the Adventist church. Among the responses, Sabbath schools throughout the church dedicated their mission offerings to the construction of a missionary ship, which was fittingly named the Pitcairn, which finally arrived at its namesake in late 1890, 130 years ago, with much rejoicing. Out of heartache, hope. May Cudney's story be a reminder of that during the next week and throughout the holiday season. Thanks for watching a and Join us next week for more news from the headquarters of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. We'd love to hear from you. Send us your feedback and tell us how your church is making a difference in its community. Be sure to capture plenty of video footage and photos then write up a summary of the event's important details and feel free to send a full video report as well. That's right. You can reach us by sending an email to annvideo11 at gmail.com. Before we say goodbye, here's some good news, and it comes from the book of Acts, chapter 3, verse 19 and 20. And the passage says, Repent then and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped out, that times of refreshing may come from the Lord, and that he may send the Messiah who has been appointed for you, even Jesus. Amen. Well, that's our program for this week. Remember, you can always visit Adventist.News for daily news and videos. Until next time, God bless. Take care.